This is a HeadGum Original. I check in every single show. A day won't fail, and that's for sure. I crack up every time. The one thing truly bothers me. Golden my conspiracy. Why can't Nice. Yeah. It's really nice. I didn't song. appreciate the the messaging, but I like the guitar and yeah. I like the voice. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 when you hear what the lyrics actually said, they were pretty nasty and derogatory towards me. And Ultimately, I'm yeah. But I'm trying to like look past that right. to the point where I'm like, okay, this is Christian Freeberg, his name yeah. was. Separate the art from the artist. Exactly. My song submission is an acoustic parody of a thrice song called Stare at the Sun. Oh, nice. If you could, would you please shout out my hardcore punk band? Oh, and yeah. then he says the name of the band. And you better fucking <laughs> believe that this chipmunk won't say the name of it. <laughs> How's that for fair? Yeah. I played your little song. Right. I extracted the joy out of it, mm -hmm. but I won't give him the honor of saying what his band is on my podcast. <laughs> for him to come change your hand, <laughs> change your hand. First of all, first and foremost, make a new hand gesture. Okay, relax it. Spread Keep my band's name out of your fucking mouth, <laughs> Will Smith. Are you sure you extracted any joy? <laughs> <laughs> because it actually sounds like you got super wound up and angered. Yes, and actually we're recording this in our studio so you guys can see this. If you're mm. on our YouTube channel, this is a video version of our show. You can listen to it as you would a normal podcast, but you yep. can also watch it. Yeah. Thanks to the magic of video podcasting on our YouTube. So Indeed. you can see how much joy or anger it caused. Right. Fine. His name, his band's name is Violets, and it's spelled V-Y-L-T-S. Hmm. Violets. Pretty cool, right? No vowels except for the Y. Sometimes Y, yeah. yeah. It's All a right. Wordle chic word band name. Wow, it's been a minute since I played Wordle, actually. Really? Yeah. We just released our first single, and it's streaming on all platforms right now. For fans of Touche Amore, Defeater, and Knocked Loose. Love it. How are people discovering new songs nowadays? I feel like I only hear what is popular on TikTok. Are you listening to the radio? Or are you listening to Spotify playlists? I do listen to Spotify playlists that get up. I listen to my like, my, like Discover and yeah. every once in a while. It's hard for me to like actually discover new music because I'll listen to a song and I'll be like, oh, I like this and I'll press the heart button. Mm -hmm. And so I have a playlist of like my liked songs yeah. and I know what they sound like. But I couldn't tell you the, name the names of, of any of them. Yeah, like yeah. what's the what's the most recent new song you remember liking? Oh, there's a song called "Bodies" by Megan the Stallion. No, no, no. When I hear that AOA, oh, da, 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 da. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's called or really how it right, goes, but it's a great song and yeah. it makes me feel happy when yeah. I hear it. But yeah. I've discovered that one recently and it's on my liked song. I think it's called Bodies. Yeah. And I, again, I just, I don't, like Lil Nas X, is he like the newest artist that I can name? Mm -hmm. Potentially so. Actually, what I rediscovered recently was Guster, a Guster. band I really liked in high school. Wow. And they're back or you're just listening to just their listening songs? Just listening to their old songs. Yeah. Just, I was, in, I was in Seattle and I was going on a run and I was like, I don't know what to listen to. And I was like, and I was like, you know what? Fucking Guster. I haven't heard those guys in a minute. And, and you better believe I think it's the nostalgia, but I still like all of it. Is Guster? No, they're not the ones that sang. It was a crazy game. No, that's OAR. Yeah. And I listened to that actually that weekend kind of triggered a whole uh, like, you know, college playlist moment yeah. for me. And 
the OAR songs I liked did not hold up really, <laughs> really as well. What's a famous Guster song? Have I heard any um, of these Guster songs? Happier. Um, because I'm happier. Yeah, that's it. That's the <laughs> one. That's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sequel to Happy. <laughs> uh, okay, that was Christian Freeberg. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you for le- supplying the song. And uh, it's cool that you played guitar and sang. I wish it wasn't about me being a rodent slash tree creature yeah or tree creature for short but right. we'll take what we can get yeah uh this is if i were you the only advice pod on the web hosted by us i'm amir i'm justin oh yeah christian <laughs> what is it christian chase bieber <laughs> christian justin bieber, bieber. <laughs> christian <laughs> <laughs> i am christian bieber because bieber is christian yeah and you're you, you could be believe. jewish bieber right uh all right as always real questions from real people we're going to do our best to answer this. The energy is high right now because, again, mm-hmm. we're from IRL. F- yeah, we're, we're absolutely it. IRL. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, this is a funny one I found <clears throat> in our Electro mailbox. And uh, it's sort of a problem that's a humble brag. I love it. So we'll call this guy Humbert Brag. Good. I'm a 23-year-old guy that's six foot one inch, bald and bearded. Okay. I've had plenty of sexual encounters, but I have one problem. <laughs> Every girl I've ever slept with has only done it because of my size. They've either heard it through friends or asked me directly. A stat for Amir, I'm, voluntar- I'm volumetrically larger than 99.62% of men. Approximately 2.3x the average, according to the penis percentile calculator online. How did he say two point two times? Two and a half times the average. Jesus. That seems not true. That means like if the average penis is six inches, he's he's not two, um, like 15 inches. <laughs> what if he is? Insane. I feel like I'm a nice person and I'm generally liked. <laughs> and I just can't seem to find a relationship that has a basis other than his dick is big and I want to try it out. Okay. So here's the question. How do I get a girl to like me for who I am and not just my massive main vein? <laughs> Should I not? Uh, should I just not answer? <laughs> it should answer? be your fucking hinge bio, bro. <laughs> should I? Should I just not answer when a girl asks me my size? Any advice is appreciated. I've, Thank you. How often do I've never been asked my size? Yeah, like, because yours isn't two point three x the average. But like he's saying, like it, it sounds like he, he's getting asked like leading up to a sexual encounter. Uh, yes. It's That's, as if, it's as if it's a small town and they all talk. His reputation is preceding him. That's right. I mean, the best way to have a big dick is quietly. So. That's cool. Yeah. So like nobody knows and it's a pleasant surprise. Right. Yeah. But the cat's out of the bag. I think you have to embrace the fact that you have a hook. Like, not like the, the penis is, is hooked, but like the, the there's like a, an angle that people are, you know. Not that your penis is an angle. An angle. Yeah. 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 This is just like, but yeah. But there's like a cock. Th- oh, sorry. Not that your penis is <laughs> yeah. a cock. There's a reason that people are intrigued by you. Yeah. You know, everybody has something. Like people want to get to know you because you're funny and you're, you live in the woods. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting. That's you're cool. a woodland creature and they want to know what you eat and I'm how not, you exist. But yeah, I can see why world. that would be they the say, cool thing. <laughs> what made you evolve? No. basically into human but not so far that you're not a chipmunk you and that makes people interested in you and then it's your personality and your cute little chipmunk ways that make me look at you you're eating an acorn <laughs> i'm chewing on a nut because i got hungry i you... think like maybe the reason you are having sexual encounters is because people are curious about your body or maybe that's the reason that people are intrigued by you and is that fine that's fine ultimately the reason they stick around will be your personality i think you have to give everyone a free pass because lucky for you you're a freak of nature kind of cool if you're in the 99.6 percentile according to a penis percentile calculator online have you ever measured your member yes of course and did you do it uh, with like a tape measure, just a hard ruler? Did you like measure your hands and then sort of guesstimate? Uh, I believe it was a ruler. A ruler. <laughs> a ruler. So From you didn't my dad's quite... workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I used a protractor because <laughs> that's how fucking curvaceous it is. <laughs> and I measured the yaw of my car. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and what well, were you, you working? Measure for the for the the girth. What's that? The, you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> you heard. You absolutely heard me. I actually had to use a yardstick for mine. <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> and a yaw stick for the yaw. <laughs> I used a yardstick to find out it was 2.1 <laughs> inches thin. <laughs> and then I used a soda can to sort of approximate oh the girth of it. Oh, my good God. What? I can't believe it's 2022 and we're just fucking going all in on <laughs> cock size. It's about time we go back. Yeah. Mine's about roughly the cylindrical size of a little medicine bottle. You know what I mean? The little kind that, like... uh Pills come in, and it rattles like that too, as if there's two loose pills at the um, the base of it. With once you take the cotton out, I'm sorry to take it out. What? Take it out? No, it's insane. <laughs> We're live in a We're studio. Not live. There's a studio audience here. I'm not gonna remember my member. Oh, good God. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I bet most people have, you know. Measured their penis. You have to. Have just, you? I have. I was curious. <laughs> when you want to know if you're, yeah, what you're working with. We're so we're dangerously close to like, <laughs> you know, this a dick measuring contest. Yeah, this isn't where we want to head as a society, is it? Pun intended. Yes. Nice. Actually, instead of measuring, what we can do is joust. So you. Oh take my out... God! What? <laughs> just see whose tip touches the other person's first. That way we know who's working with. It's not even deep... about size. Then it's about skill. <laughs> because we will be riding towards each other <laughs> on a horse. <laughs> Chivalry isn't dead, folks. What do you think this guy should do? Who cares? You're hung like a horse, bro. <laughs> Talk to me when you have a real problem, like not being able to close. <laughs> How about a penis reduction procedure? I don't think he wants that. Mm. I think he's happy to... It, the, he's obviously proud. He's gone on to multiple different dick calculation websites. He knows yeah. the percentile he's in. Yeah. There has to be, examine yourself a little bit and try to, de, try to decipher if you're not a little bit proud about this. I mean, he's two standard deviations above average. That means for every person in his percentile, there's somebody who's rocking a micro peen just mm -hmm. to make the average stay that where it is. Yeah. What do you think the average is by... I feel like I've heard it's six or five and a half or something. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, body height, like heights wise, yeah. but inches instead of feet. Right. Yeah. How big is yours? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> you said you measured. <laughs> so you actually, you know. His is 99.62%. Bigger than yours. Bigger than most. <laughs> Mine is 99.63. And I don't even say that lightly. I really say that with the gravitas and seriousness. And I didn't want to tell everybody, and you forced that out of me. So, yeah. I actually am a pretty humble guy. I'm a shower and a grower, if you can imagine. It starts big and ends longer. Uh, because I'm happier. Happier. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's a question. How do I get a girl to like me for who I am? I guess... Uh, you'll know, you'll know. Sometimes I think it'll happen at the same rate as though you had a small penis, but I guess, yeah. uh, while you're weeding people out, they're also having sex with you, which how is do you, a how fine do you get a, to a, Anyone to like you for who you are is you spend more time with them. So it's like, it's weird that you would ha expect anyone to like you for who you are, you know, so fast. Mm, yeah. It also depends on if you're a nice guy, just, right. you know. So it's just, actually. the answer is just over time, but you will have to... You know, deal with people being curious about your member. You're probably wondering what my cock looks like, he <laughs> says on the first date. Why does nobody like me for who I am? Yeah, maybe you have to move. People say that having the the, the reputation of having a BD, big dick, mm -hmm. is actually a, a, a curse because everybody's expecting it to be pretty big. Oh, interesting. So it's almost like it's better, like you said, to have that, the mythos. That's why you'll often hear... Um, Nasty rumors about me, <laughs> about allegations you, right. wise, <laughs> pictures, photos of my <laughs> so D it's... next to a plum. Right, and they're roughly the same size. So it's not rumors; it's and evidence. color. It's that's facts. not. I did not have sexual relations. Your penis with that. is out. It's on your trackpad, and my God, it's small. I mean, my God, man.
<laughs> it looks like a thin sliver of a mouse pad. It's it's felt. It's purple felt. <laughs> Why purple? Purple felt. Purple felt. Uh, congratulations. I don't know what you want me to say. Should I even give this guy a fake name? I feel like let's fucking out him. Yeah. He wants, he's the hero that everyone wants it to be. Follow up, ask for a photo. <laughs> we deserve to see. We deserve to see it, sir. A follow-up pup that's just a dick pic. Uh, all right, let's take a break and answer some questions that aren't so blue after I this mean, break. come on. It is blue. It's left of center. It's disgusting. It's odious. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode of our show. Yeah. BetterHelp is online therapy. Right. Uh, people are stressed out right now. And even if you think you're not stressed out, it starts showing itself. It mm -hmm. starts manifesting itself in different ways. That's right. For example... I grind my teeth in my sleep. Yes, Jill told me I've been doing that as well. Yeah, so I got a grind guard, but that's mm -hmm. not necessarily helping my stress. It's just making sure that my teeth aren't worn down to the right. nubs. Yeah, you're, you're protecting against the teeth, but you really want to go to the root of the cause. Yes, and the root is obviously talking, um, you know, the stress, depression, anxiety we're facing mm -hmm. uh, can be helped by going to therapy. And BetterHelp is a very convenient, professional, and affordable way to go to therapy. Indeed. Especially right now because you can do it online in the comfort of your own home. Yeah. Uh, it's customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Very nice. So you definitely don't have to sit in the same room as them. That's good. Uh, and it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. In fact, it's so affordable that you can even get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash if I were you. That's huge. So they sponsor this episode, and then you can go and help yourself mm -hmm. at betterhelp.com slash if I were you. Right. You'll 10%. get 10%. They yeah. know that we sent you. It's sort of this positive feedback loop. I love it. Uh, that's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash if I were you. The name of our show. That's right. And everybody is, you know, going through some hardship right now. Yeah. It's not necessarily a carefree, easy time in human history. Yeah, I would say. So it's totally normal that your relationships need help, whether it's with a loved one or by yourself. Totally. Uh, and again, that's betterhelp.com slash if I were you for 10% off your first month of online therapy. Cool. Thank you, BetterHelp. Cheers. Thank you to Everlane for sponsoring this episode of our show. Yeah. Huge fan. Huge I mean, fan over here. you called their t-shirt the greatest white tee of all time. Yes, before they even paid us. So you know you actually love Everlane. And then mm -hmm. they started sending us clothes, and now I love Everlane too. Yes. Yes. It, it's high quality stuff. It's super comfortable. Very. And I mean, now I'm finding out that they have ethical factories, so I don't have to feel bad wearing Honestly, them. Honestly, I loved it even before I knew that. Exactly. Know? I love it despite that. So say goodbye to unsustainable fast fashion and say hello to Everlane designs that are timeless closet staples that you mm -hmm. can wear over and over again. I believe these pants, these jeans are Everlane. They're very nice. Thank you. You have pretty bad legs and those actually are flattering on you. What do you mean bad legs? I mean, you have kind of like famously <laughs> not really famous bad that everybody legs you really think i'm famous <laughs> no like you're infamous for your for kind of like the situation you have on your lower extremities yeah it's like my legs are on upside down it's yes i was gonna say yeah, it's hairy reverse thighs drumstick. near my yeah. ankle you have and then thin pencil thin legs quads. on the quad yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like a, a it thickle. thickens and harries right. as it goes down i have it's kind of like popeye hankless. but on, yes. on the legs exactly yeah. not a cartoon right uh, well, if you want to go to everlane.com slash if I were you and sign up, you'll even get 10% off your first order. Whoa. Huge. That's right. That's 10% nice. off your first order. If you go to everlane.com slash if I were you, you sign up to Everlane because it's ethically made, it's sustainably sourced, it's incredibly comfortable, mm -hmm. it's stylish, and now it's even affordable. Wow. So check them out. That's everlane.com slash if I were you. There you go. Upgrade your uh, closet game, guys. Yeah, check them out. And we're back. Hey, Jake, do you have any? Oh, it's a list. Who did the fight? Mom, I'm coming. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I don't, but I think you do. So we're in a studio right now. We didn't really have any unsolicited advice, so yeah. we opened it up to our confident producers over there. And Anya actually has been um, mentioning that she journals at night, mm -hmm. right before bed, doesn't journal, writes down her thoughts, right. and it helps them from racing around in her head as Empty she falls the brain asleep. goes to bed. That's right. So anything that's sort of kicking around the noodle up there, 
and it's like sort of repeating ad nauseum mm -hmm. right before you go to sleep. You write it down, and then you can go to sleep with a clear conscience. Is that more or less what the situation is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> not even close, Bloomin. It's <laughs> she was talking about <laughs> exercising more. I don't know where you came up it's with the journaling egg thing. <laughs> yeah. So the key is to not think of it as a journal. The key is to not think just, of it as a journal, just, right? And just write what you're yeah. thinking. Yeah, Anya said she doesn't look at it at all the next day. Interesting. So it's, it's really just a release. Yeah. But the thing is, when I'm falling asleep, I um, I don't have any um, thoughts left in my brain all day. I think it's because I talk so much during the day that by the time I'm ready for sleep, my head's already empty and my soul is too. Mm. So I'll sort of just fade to black. <laughs> the other way, if you find yourself with the anxiety of like constantly overthinking or thinking many things throughout the day, the way to get that out of your brain, I guess you're saying, is to write it down right before you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I think there's like my whatever I'm anxious about usually rears its head during the day, and I don't have anything at night. At night, I always go to sleep really easily because you're you're dead from the day. I don't even know if it's because I'm dead for the. It's just like my brain is just like I, mine doesn't come when my like my brother's his his comes at night and not during the day. Oh, interesting. But me, I'm like wired just different. I yeah. I'm stressed about stuff during the daytime and relaxed in the evening right i guess it's uh, what i don't know which one is better than the other because one sort of ruins your day and the other one kind yeah. of ruins your night neither of them are good no <laughs> we should try to get rid of them for the whole you know all the time that's right which is brings us to our other sponsor better help thank you to you guys <laughs> we for... just came back from that <laughs> oh, yeah uh okay hopefully that's helpful to some of y'all out there but they do say that journaling not that this is journaling is right. very helpful writing writing it down yeah i yeah. do never write anything down I, mean, I, th I fear I'm forgetting how to like even handwrite. Oh yeah, definitely. I um, like this happens to my wife. She'll like wake up. She wakes up in the middle of the night and needs to write things down to get them out of her head. Mm. Um, but I like I've woken up before. It's like four a.m. I, I like take off my eye mask and she's just like sitting there with the lights <laughs> on writing. I'm like, geez, <laughs> you're having a different night than me. <laughs> Can you turn that uh, light off, please? Yeah. I'm going back to dream. Night Putting night. on a VR headset. <laughs> Fart loud really loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here's a question from somebody who might be going through his own certain sets of anxieties. Mm. And uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, really? Yeah. So let's call this guy Ross. Because okay. he says he does something Ross style. My wife and I have been together for six years. With any relationship, we've had our ups and downs. Everything is great now, but about a year into our relationship, we took a break. Ross <laughs> nice. style. During this period, my wife was absolutely railed. <laughs> railed by a guy named Ezekiel. <laughs> Zeke! That's right. Give her the Z! My, my, my wife told me she had sex during this period, but did not tell me his name. I learned that through the grapevine. Whatever. Fine. Kosher. Legal, even. Yeah. <laughs> Quite. Cut to now. We're having a baby, and she wants to name the bish Ezekiel. She doesn't know that this is the name. Uh, she doesn't know that I know that this is the name of the dastardly fiend I've poked around, and it's not like he, she has an uncle or a grandpappy. And when asked, she says, I just like that name. What does this mean? It's a fine name, I guess, but I don't want to be <laughs> thinking about that dude when I look upon my son's face. Can I bring it up? She's the one pooping this thing out, so how oh much God. ground do I really even have? Am I just being a petty Jew, much like the prophet Ezekiel? What would you do if you were me? Yes, we made a deal that if it was a girl, I'd name her, and if it was a boy, she would. Also, mm. she seems pretty basically decided that she, <laughs> she talks to her belly and calls it Ezekiel. Oh, my God. She's actually talking to her vagina. <laughs> That's right. Missing him. Uh, yeah, what do you think? So they is it 100% they know the sex of the baby, or is it a coin flip right now? Like, do they not know? They know it's a boy. They know it's a boy. She's okay. going Zeke. And they made the deal. She has chosen Ezekiel. She has chosen, and he doesn't knows in, or she doesn't knows in that he knows in why she chosen. One, th I think that it's part like, I feel like I get both sides. In one instance, I think you could do a better job of getting over Ezekiel because, like, I don't think she's naming the baby Ezekiel because she got railed so hard one time that she wants to like think about it every time <laughs> she talks. To, like, she probably liked the name. 
Maybe that's what drew her to this guy in the first place. Oh, interesting. So the name predates the rail. I, yeah, I don't think that he gave a like such a memorable sex. Perf- like, how does he know that she got railed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she knows. Oh, he knows. Like, he could, knows. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you want to start like digging up like, oh, we can't name this baby after anyone either of us have been with. Yeah. Because it takes names off the table. It's just not that. As a general rule, I don't know what happened to you during the break. Can we just eliminate names of people I've ever slept with and you actually. Right. And then she's like, yes. And then she's like, I'm going to call him Ezekiel. And then like, well, that's the thing. Because I, I, I some heard research. something through the great I did some vibe. opposition research into you. <laughs> Oppo research. I know that you actually were railed by Ezekiel. I, so I think that you could do a better job of getting over it. But at the same time, I don't think that you will. And I think that it probably makes sense to say something sooner rather than later. Yeah, because this is a problem. It's not like a temporary problem. Because no. the baby will hopefully outlive you. You don't want this name to be on the birth certificate, and then you realize you can't live with it, and then you tell her. Do you like the name Ezekiel in general for a child? I like old old school names. I'm not Ezekiel's not like my favorite, yeah. but I don't I'm not opposed to it. I don't know. I don't know, but it sounds very Amish to me. Yeah, it is, I think. Yeah, well, it's, or it's Old Testament, cool. right? Um, Zeke, I don't really like the name Zeke as a as a nickname either. Yeah. What is Zeke? Like, do you know any Zekes in your life? They just, I imagine like a scary guy named Zeke. Right, I think that's from uh, Salute Your Shorts. There is Zeke oh, the Plumber. right, Zeke the Plumber, Zeke. maybe the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. why I don't like. You it. should pl- you should just play that episode of Salute Your Shorts for your wife That's and good. be like, maybe we should name it Ezekiel. I mean, look at this yeah. guy. This guy was awful. What are you showing me? It was a show in the <laughs> early '90s that had eight episodes, and I think we. Sh- I'm gonna use my veto on Zeke. <laughs> oh, that I mean, that's what you should have done. It is like when you have this, you choose a guy, I choose a girl, but we each get a veto. Oh, a that's zito. Good. That's really nice. But a it's zito. too late for that. Right. So maybe for the next child. I think it's a dangerous game to do. Uh, I choose if it's a boy, you choose if it's a girl. Yeah, because you have to agree. Yeah. Like, what are you going to have fart blanche access to naming this child? That seems like you got to put your heads together on this one. Yeah. I think that's what my parents did for me, actually. They just let your mom decide? I think my dad decided. And he's like, Jake. Yeah. But your mom had to have just she gone, had to have been at the very okay least with gone it. along with it. I, she, if, I remember that if I was a girl, she wanted to name me Jessamy. And I'm glad <laughs> that I'm a guy for, you know, a lot of reasons, obviously. But but, <laughs> but then they they had three more girls and Jessamy didn't even crack the top three. I think at that point she must have fallen out of love with Jessamy. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you have a sister, Eliza. That's pretty, that's like the female Ezekiel. Everyone has a pretty e, biblical L, name. Z. Hannah, Rachel, Sarah, Eliza, yeah. Micah, Jacob. For a non-biblical family, you guys relied on the Bible for names. Yeah. Yeah. Would you go biblical for your names or you're not about that Old Testament lifestyle? I would, well, I want to name my son Ragnar, but Jill's having none of it. Because it sort of doesn't mean anything. It sounds like a caveman sort of making a noise. It's rooted in a history that's neither yours nor hers. It's hard to say. It's hard to spell. It's hard to see It's not hard someone. to spell or say. Ragnar, R-A-G-N-A-R. No, it's not hard. But I, everything else you say <laughs> is in line. <laughs> Thor Ragnar Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a Thor name? You like the Viking stuff. Yeah, I do. I, that's why. I, that's why I like Ragnar, because it's sort of it, it's like the D and D thing. Yeah, you want to create yeah. a hard one of yourself. Right. Exactly. Named in your image. That's exactly right. And if they should grow up to be a whiny little wiry Jew like me, right? Oh, how you wouldn't like that. Yeah. We'll Hi, make... I'm Ragnar. No, oh, <laughs> we're gonna go. You're gonna go by your middle name, Poindexter. <laughs> Rodney. Rodney <laughs> Mott. Ragnar Rodney Hurwitz. <laughs> <laughs> Who says no to that? <laughs> the RRH to rule them all. Rodney Ragnar eats a rhombus. <laughs> uh, okay, here's a 27-year-old female from South Africa that has a question. South Africa. Yeah. That was a, I think, bad accent, though. I'm not entirely sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll call this lady Joanne because she's from Johannesburg. Okay. Uh, I've been friends with this guy for over a decade now, and he's been a vegetarian for seven of those years, I think. He moved out of our hometown when high school ended, and we've had a bit of a long-distance friendship, and he would come down and spend some weekends with us throughout the years. But now is when it gets weird. 
I recently moved to the same city as him this year, and we're spending a lot more time together. But I think this fucker has been secretly not vegetarian for years and has just been lying to us the whole time. I went over to his house for dinner one day and his mom served us lasagna, and I didn't see a veggie version, but he ate it anyway. And then recently, uh, at his, he house sat for me and I found meat sausages in my fridge that I didn't buy. So how do I <laughs> confront him about this? Should I even confront him about this? I think it's fine. It's not. <laughs> it's okay. He's lying. <laughs> not really. He sort of gets off to telling people he was a vegetarian. I think it's okay. Really? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because he had a sausage. Yeah. So don't like come out. We don't, don't necessarily. Come to yeah, yeah. You don't know everything. Because he's not like. We don't. You rarely hear about vegetarians anymore. Now it seems like it's vegan or bust. Vegan or bust. Yeah. yeah. A vegetarian is a nothing. It's I'm almost... actually still vegan. Really? Yeah. What does that entail again? Vegan is the diet wherein I eat mostly vegan, but every once in a while I just listen to me and I can eat meat because it's my diet, my body, me, vegan. I see. Um, we got sushi last night. You didn't bat an eye. Yeah, because I, my vegan, my veganism mm -hmm. has shifted towards kind of a, a pescatarian lifestyle. Me wants meat most of the time now. Interesting. So it's still in line with vegan because yeah. I do decide what yeah. I eat. Yeah. As a vegan, right? Um, there are no rules. Correct. But yeah, so I'm eating meat now. <laughs> meat and cheese, poultry, <laughs> fish. I'll have a veal. Shellfish. Yeah. Just to hear them squeal. <laughs> <laughs> but that is vegan. It's very, it seems like you're just doing whatever the hell you want and calling it something else. That's correct. I would like to eat less meat just because, you know, as I um, now take care of an animal in my own house, I feel like it's kind of fucked up what we do to animals that we eat. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I understand the impulse to not want to support this terrible system yeah no it's bad oh but i'm being so selfish and that it's like yeah it's bad but also i like chicken apple sausage right. so i'll still do that i do i well i just would prefer the status quo was better for the like it's just easy i don't know you would like uh, everybody to make a rule right now let's not eat meat then we're all in this together and we'll figure right it then out. it's then it's the only option i have i wouldn't be like well no i missed the fucking chicken yeah i think it's just like that's kind of what i and then it doesn't feel like you're just not doing anything it's like great i'm not eating turkey in my sandwich but it's not really making a difference yeah, but the fake meat's pretty good fake meat is pretty good it's, it's definitely there Beyond, me. yeah. Yeah, Beyond Beef is good. Yeah. And then... I guess I like burgers, though. I mean, steak's pretty good. Yeah, so is chicken. Yeah. I recently, Not really, though. I heard this fine. I heard this crazy fact that every year, um, 80 billion animals are killed for meat, and 72 billion of them are chicken. Jesus. Doesn't that seem like way high for the amount of... Ch that's like eight chickens per person on earth is killed every year. Because, like, well, aren't, like, cows sacred in India? So, like, there's there's a lot of cultures that won't eat a cow. Yeah, exactly. Um, but chicken doesn't have that luxury. <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't, it doesn't get to be holier than anybody, thou. Yeah. Wow. Do they, are, they're not including fish on that. Yeah, I would guess not because, you know, they just bring those fish in and they just dump it on a boat. It's yeah. hard to count that. Right. That makes sense. But maybe they are including fish. Yeah. Should we be vegan together? At the very least, we should eat less meat. Yeah, no, that's good. So like an occasional meat versus uh, often everyday meat. What are you going to have for lunch today? Today, well, today the thing is just getting started. Mm -hmm. So I might actually do like a Philly cheese steak or right. something like that. A chicken cheese steak. Yeah. And then- A surf and turf. Then I have to say goodbye to this old diet by mm -hmm. doing like a- A last hurrah. Exactly. So I'll have venison. <laughs> That's deer meat. Yeah. Tomorrow, my yeah. appetite and a for lamb pot pie. <laughs> <laughs> my appetite for flesh will become insatiable as I drool over the thought we'll of be eating a horse into... <laughs> heart for breakfast. <laughs> and then tomorrow, I'll eat my dog because <laughs> if I raised it, I deserve to have him. Yeah. On Friday, I'll have a salad, but I am going lion hunting. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday, a purely vegan diet as I detusk an elephant in front of its mom. <laughs> and then Monday, we run it all back. Meatless again. Monday <laughs> in the hide, ti hunting tigers. Yes. Sorry, did I say meatless? I meant boneless, boneless wings specifically. <laughs> nice. That's extra chicken that goes into that. <laughs> uh, all right. 
let's uh, take a break, thank some sponsors, and do some real soul searching and see how we can be friendly to the environment yeah. and our animal friends. That's right. We'll be back after these messages. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this episode of our show. Yes. These guys know how to party. They sure do. They don't take themselves too seriously. No. For example, their uh, suggested copy says, have you started spring cleaning yet? Your carpets need cleaning and the drapes need dusting. <laughs> nice. And they're talking about your pubes. They absolutely are yes. talking about your mom's pubis. <laughs> and it's time to clear out your winter bush. Mm -hmm. More pube talk. Right. Uh, and get into Manscaped. Four million people. Wow. Four million men worldwide trust Manscaped. Right. And there is a reason. Uh, I guess, you know, it's the safest, best way to groom yourself down there. And then also they have mm. a bunch of proprietary skin safe technology so that yeah. it doesn't hurt. And they have a crop preserver, crop revivers, toner, chafing deodorant, everything you need for your situation down there right. to look good and smell good. Manscaped has you covered. Yes. It's sort of the perfect gift for a dude in your life. Indeed. Especially an immature dude in your life. For sure. If you have like an 18 to 24 year old male who mm -hmm. says no to a Manscaped gift bag? Yeah, that's a good sending somebody to college gift. But you know what? They're still helping out uh, society at large because oh. uh, Testicular Cancer Awareness Month is April, and Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, yeah. and early cancer detection. See, they really do care about your junk. That's right. They're raising awareness in men's aged eight, 15 to 35 and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer as part of their We Save Balls initiative. Boom. So how can you help? You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code, if I were you, at manscaped.com. Right. That's 20% off plus free shipping. Use the code, if I were you, at manscaped.com. Throw out your old hygiene habits and mm -hmm. upgrade your life slash balls today. It's time. Thanks, Manscaped. Thank you. Thank you to Bio Optimizers for sponsoring this episode of our show. Indeed. They just released their new and improved formula for magnesium breakthrough, the most powerful magnesium supplement on the market today. Okay, very it, good. It helps de-stress, it helps you sleep. And uh, magnesium is involved in 80% of the body's metabolic reactions. Metabolic, very That's good. That's right. Um, so, you know, if you suffer from poor sleep, low energy and higher stress levels, magnesium might be the best way to help and Magnesium Breakthrough, you'll mm. get that magnesium plus seven unique forms of organic full-spectrum magnesium, which can dramatically improve your health. Love it. Uh, and because it supports mental wellness, Magnesium Breakthrough can help you finally feel like yourself again. Their prices are low. And mm. if you want an exclusive offer, yeah. our listeners get 10% off and free shipping. Not bad. You just got to go to Mag Breakthrough dot com slash if I were you mag breakthrough dot com slash if I were you yeah and then you use if I were you during checkout to mm. save 10% and get free shipping great uh, so check them out check out magnesium it's a good gift for yourself or a loved one's birthday coming up Ooh, potentially Mother's pretty? Day Father's yes, Day anything good. in spring nice. spring is sprung good idea Bloomingfield now you're thinking better that. be Head healthier yours. Yes. special link again is mag breakthrough dot com slash if I were you correct Thank you, bio-optimizers. Bye. And we have returned. Yeah. How close are your guys in New York to having a studio like this so we could do some um, episodes like this in NYC? Dangerously close. Really? We've got the space. Everything is built. It is soundproof. The, the panels need to be hung. The lights need to be hung. The cameras need to be set up. But all that stuff is there. Interesting. Everything's on site. Everything is built. Did you get one of those cool TVs like we have that's like the frame TV that looks like an image, but it's actually a television? Did. Yes. Same exact one. The exact same one. Wow. We, I think we just copy, copied your entire order and mm. did it over there. Yeah. I don't consider it my order because I had nothing to do with it, but right. yeah. Yeah, totally. Casey's order, really. Right. Sure. So yeah. he thought of everything. Mm -hmm. You guys just said, okay, copy, paste, let's do this in New York. I didn't even say that. I think it was Marika and Katie. Mm. So yeah. Mm. I've literally done nothing. But I wonder what it'll look like if we could do a split screen. So it looks like I'm talking to you. So yeah. there would be a computer in your we didn't, chair. We didn't get this thing because I found this to be a mistake because really? it's kind of an optical illusion. Oh, yeah. yeah. So 
I think we're putting it, shelves and stuff on here to sort of break, smart. That's yeah, good. break the yeah the slats of it right. all. So, so I yours think, is just a matte single color. Yeah, are your you have more of a, a beige theme, uh -huh. and we're gonna have more of a gray theme. Interesting, beige and gray. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> I believe our walls are painted gray. Beige and gray, mm -hmm. grayish and beige. Grayish. But we're gonna have the yeah, we're gonna we'll have the shelves. We're gonna have similar furniture. I think it'll I think it'll intercut for sure. That's cool. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, here's one last question to rule them all. Ready? Yeah. Uh, this one is about potentially hooking up with a porn star. Nice. Uh, it's a dude. So what's a popular porn dude name? Um, Peter North. Peter. North writes, I recently discovered a brand new porn star who's quickly becoming one of my favorites. Okay. Well, I Come on. Because I like porn. I didn't say it. Yes, you did. You paused so, so, so to give it more time. <laughs> yeah. After some digging, I found her personal TikTok and began following her. Turns out she's originally from the suburb of my city. She ended up watching and liking some of my TikToks. I subscribed to her OnlyFans. And then I found her personal Instagram. Hmm. At this point, I can literally dox her, but I won't. Jesus. I won't, he writes. <laughs> okay. But I was thinking about reaching out to her to see if she wants to get coffee one of these times when she's home for the holiday. I missed my chance already when she was home for Thanksgiving. I could be up front and let her know that I know she's a porn star or play it cool and pretend I only know her from TikTok. Interesting. So he's like sliding into the DMs, the TikToks. She probably knows how he know, right? Like it's not yeah. too big of a secret. I don't I feel like if you make porn, there's no chance that this is the only guy that sought her out. Yeah. <laughs> She's uh, she knows the whole game. She's been there, there before, especially yeah. if he follows her on OnlyFans. Right. But he, like it's it's all anonymous on yeah. OnlyFans, right? I, I mean, I just think she probably knows that you know or something. But it's also fine if I would just I would reframe this in your brain from you feeling like you have all the cards to she's actually seen everything before, right? So you do not have the upper hand. <laughs> you are one of many who's trying to get coffee with her. But, um, you know, she watches your TikToks. That's good. That's a good start. Yeah. Ask we, her for coffee, but with no expectations, especially no expectations that you are in control. <laughs> that's right. Well, he actually continues because okay. this is when it gets even a hairier situation. Interesting. I wanted to get your insight just on the first part. Okay. The other thing is I'm married. Oh, what do you... All right, let me finish. <laughs> because what you suggested to him was actually really fucked up knowing this part. And we're going to edit this to make it sound like I said that before you talked about the other <laughs> no, shit. we're not. <laughs> Maybe my wife would be cool with me fucking a porn star? It's basically a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Maybe my wife would be down for a three-way. Frankly, my confidence is about 50-50 as to whether or not I can get this porn star to fuck me. It's just a matter of shooting my shot. Heh. <laughs> what would you do if you were me? Does this change anything you had in mind for the first Of course. Answer? Of course. <laughs> Interesting. How so? First of all, my shot, like, it doesn't sound like it was even that hard. Mm. You found her on TikTok. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Definitely, you can't have your wife play catch up with this situation. Mm. You need, she should if be this ahead is something you want, yeah, yeah, you should be, she should be in lockstep with you in the, from the get go. Do you think he's actually this casual about this? Is this guy so cool and open that he's like, yeah, should I go after this porn star? Also, I'm married. Maybe I'll have a threesome. Like, is it possible? No, I think he's just loosey-goosey. Yeah. No. Or I is don't... he kind of crazy wazy? I think no one, I think he's probably the most loosey-goosey about everything. <laughs> yeah. If I could make a prediction on the situation, yeah. I think he his wife would not be cool with it, and he actually has no chance with the porn star. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> worst of both worlds is you tell your wife she's she's offended. You yeah. sh you decide to shoot your shot anyway. The porn star uh, honestly just rebuffs you, thinks it's creepy that you found out her home address uh -huh. on Instagram and uh -huh. want to get coffee, uh -huh. and then you just you're kind of shit out of luck. So because you're saying his confidence. You told your wife you wanted to cheat on her, and a porn star rejected you, and. That's that's shooting the shot. I think 
you know, keep the rock <laughs> at that point. So he says, my confidence is about 50-50. Your confidence, I think, is at a million. <laughs> and it <laughs> needs to be about 50-50. It's too high, would you say? It should be closer to 1090, it seems like, for, for 10 being accepted and 90 being rejected. Tell your, wife you're, feels really high. tell your wife you're into this type of thing and see how she feels about it. Yeah. And then you can go with God. That's cool. Yeah, maybe they are a religious couple or something like that. And she can spin it in a way that's like in the Bible. Like a sister wife type of thing. Yeah, or like sort of like a multiple personality situation. Yeah. Because I think The Last Supper was a low-key orgy. No shit. If you see the painting, it's actually a key party. (laughs) There's a little bowl with a lot of like skeleton keys in there. And who's the one that sort of kisses, uh, is it Judas? Judas. Yeah, Yeah. he actually French Jesus. (laughs) So that they knew which one was him, right? Isn't that how You should commission an oil painting that is the Last Supper as an orgy. It's Jesus doing like this, but he's kind of like (laughs) ski pulling (laughs) fucking Judas. And And there's uh, no way this exists already, right? We thought of it. We had to. Yeah, there's no way anybody would make such a fucking sacrilegious idea. They'd go to hell like we already are. Really? Mm -hmm. (laughs) What about the Mona Lisa, but there's Cleve? (laughs) I'm serious. Let's fucking finally we, allow... We, we can't record in person. The podcast <laughs> devolves into this, a literal dick measuring contest and a porn star thing and Jesus jerking off Judas. <laughs> you said that one. Yeah, and I'm not proud of it. <laughs> and we're not even airing what we said during the commercial break. Which was all entirely too blue to ever yeah. have written. Really, we have to I'm... go back to Zoom. We have some humility there. <laughs> We have the veneer, the yeah. the screen allows us to look at ourselves. I think that's what it is. Because when you're zooming, you can see yourself. Right. Yeah. If I saw myself, I would never see this <laughs> yeah. much. Like I'm a the vitriol, the dirty poison that I spew. But right now, all I can see is sort of my hands, mm-hmm. like my POV, and then right. your face. Yeah. And I'm okay saying that to you. You would think looking at Casey and Anya, you'd have... I'm ignoring them. Right. I'm trying to pretend that we're the only two people in the room. Otherwise, totally. I'll feel that. I'll, f- I'll feel that energy, and I'll be ashamed. Definitely. And that shame is what I feel 24-7. <laughs> and so I come in so here... this is I, hiding from it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. In a way, I'm sort of hiding behind the camera. And in a way, you actually have to spew th- the darkest, ugliest stuff you can, because then that that gives you the sh- that like gives you the reaction that you want that would make this shame make sense. Exactly. It's not unlike the it's, journaling thing, where mm-hmm. it's like I have to get this out of my head because otherwise, I'm thinking about that, and now I, if I share it with the world, now yeah. that's on them. It's actually it's it's almost the opposite of the journaling thing because the journaling thing is like a healthy way to get mm-hmm. your thoughts out. You're projecting them into a microphone yeah giving them to an audience and i'm forcing when you say stuff you force people to think about it like yeah. the ski pole thing that you're talking about. I, people you, have to have that image because it's impossible not to and now now that they have it you don't if i die this weekend and like a lot of new people check out our podcast this will be the last should thing. we still release this do you think oh interesting yeah because we are recording it ahead of time mm-hmm. i guess if if I die now, like now, Actually, we definitely might, should because I'm like calling it. This might like be that. an Easter episode. <laughs> oh, fuck. Really? Yeah, he has risen and all that shit. Yeah, totally. Um, That's fine. <laughs> ultimately. <laughs> yeah, because then it's like thematically relevant yeah, by accident. I am an atheist. Right. So ultimately it doesn't really matter. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, all right. Thanks for writing in your uh, questions, everybody. Um, good luck. <laughs> I'd love a follow up pup. Yeah. Let me let me let us know how that goes. Yeah. Did the fifty fifty confidence ever waver mm-hmm. as you brought this up to not only your wife but a uh porn star you met on TikTok. Right. Um what if he writes his bags like, Yeah, worked out. Threesome happened uh, shortly thereafter. I mean that'd be amazing. I, you'd have to be a guest. <laughs> <laughs> You're my hero, sir. Uh and if you have your own questions or theme songs, send them all down to if I were you show at gmail.com. Yeah. As always, this is being simulcasted, video recorded, so you can watch this episode on our YouTube channel. That's right. And for more content, we're watching old Jake and Amir episodes on our Patreon, patreon.com slash J-A. J-A. Uh, thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to you guys for listening. However you're consuming this, we appreciate it. We'll be back, of course, next week. And the theme song, the theme song. Let's see if we can remember. It was a... a, a, a it was acoustic. Yeah, it was thrice. Oh, Violet. Yes. Was it, it was Christian. Christian made a parody. Right, but the, wasn't the band called... It was a hardcore oh, yeah. punk Violets? band called Violets. V-Y-L-T-S. V-Y-L-T-S. Yeah.
Uh, thank you, Christian, for making that for us. And we'll be back, I'm sure, next week. Ciao, everybody. I check in every single show. A day won't fail, and that's for sure. I crack up every time. That was a HeadGum original.